Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Inept General, and welcome to some Total War Warhammer news. Now, today we got the announcement that we're going to be seeing a new mode for Total War Warhammer 2. Now, the question I've gone back and forth on all day, and uh, sort of a bit of yesterday, really, was, is this a good mode, or is this some self-serving dross from Creative Assembly? Now, I'm going to get a some people disagreeing with me on this video, but this is just my opinion, guys. So, for those of you who don't know, let's go over what the laboratory mode is, first of all. So, the laboratory mode looks like it's essentially a playground. You can use sliders to change unit sizes, literally, and by the numbers. So, you can make units huge. You can make them just have a lot of uh, single units. You can maybe make them a bit smaller. Um, and it's just the idea is to really push any PC you have to its absolute breaking point in terms of the size you can make enemies, the scale you can make them, and there is the uh, potential to have some truly fantastic things like defying gravity and sending your troops flying, and really has a lot of potential for making very spectacular sights in the Total War Warhammer 2 engine. Now, my this is where the issues start coming in for me. On the surface, it's a sandbox. You can play around, you can change the settings of almost every conceivable thing you can think of in a Total War Warhammer 2 battle. You can absolutely just go for it and have a laugh. Now, that's initially how I took this. I was like, oh, what a funny thing. That would be so fun just to like mess around, play with the stats and stuff. And I got myself to thinking, okay, but in all honesty, I'm probably only going to do that for, uh, let's say, what, maybe two days or something before I get a bit bored of it and then just go back to the campaign or something like that. Um, and even not only that, but also just looking at some of the demo battles they were doing, I was trying to think on the, like, the force it would take on my rig, uh, that just the amount of numbers that are on the screen at any given time. Now, admittedly, some people out there have hugely powerful PCs and will just chug through this or cut through it like a warm knife and butter, if you will. But... For most people, they don't have cutting-edge PCs that can handle this amount of pressure, much like the warning we actually get at the beginning of this trailer for the laboratory mode in Total War Warhammer 2. But, so, it's going to press your PC. Most PCs won't be able to handle it properly. So, what's really the point? You can't do everything. You're really limited by the power of your PC. And then if you're going to do it with another player, then you're limited by the power of their PC, potentially, as well. So it just seems like a bit of a complicated thing that people probably aren't going to spend much time on. And after the announcement yesterday, which in case you missed it, uh, do check the top right hand corner for that news. But to sum it up for you guys, essentially the news yesterday was that we're not going to see Norska until May. Because they have to apparently rewrite the whole army from the ground up. And the Tomb Kings, or the what we're assuming is going to be the Tomb Kings, the new race in Total War Warhammer 2, was meant to be coming out this month, but it got pushed back. Now, there's multitudes of reasons given for the Norska thing, and as a result, one could argue that the Tomb King thing was a knock-on from that, but also Creative Assembly are putting out a lot of stuff right now. They're putting out Empires Divided, which just came out, which was an expansion on Rome 2. They put out Britannia, I think, sort of later next month or soon, and they're putting out Tomb King still in January, and there's still that full historical title they're working on in the background, let alone the far-off work for Total War Warhammer 3 as well. So Creative Assembly a studio with a lot of stuff on their hands right now. Now, this sort of idea of being able to play for 10 minutes, as far as I can tell, really benefits two people hugely, and that is YouTubers. So I really should be kind of critical and be like, woohoo, this is a great mode, but YouTubers with high-end PCs will be able to make some fantastically entertaining videos. But really, in effect, all that's doing is playing free marketing for Creative Assembly. So really, to put on my cynical hat, this just looks like a mode they made to make their game look fantastic on the internet, which people with realistic PCs at home probably won't be able to get anywhere near the stuff replicated on the internet, at least not a couple of years, but it makes their game look good despite the fact it probably will not perform like that on their PC at home. So really, it's a way of getting sort of backdoor marketing in there for their game to be like, oh, look at these huge, epic, extremely massive battles. This is Total War Warhammer 2. Too. And then someone innocently goes out, buys it, and is like, oh, what the F is this? And so, 
For that reason, I've been going back and forth. On the surface, innocently, it just seems like a bit of fun. Harmless fun. And I do hold some resentment towards it. And the fact that this took some time. This did take some time to do. They had to set the scales. They had to do the markers. Now, admittedly, not a huge amount of time. Because you're just playing around with value numbers behind the engine, really. That's all you're doing. You're playing around with values. But it did take some time. Now, that time could have been spent giving us another Lord Pack or accelerating Tomb Kings forward. I'd much rather have seen that than this. But I can see them having to make a marketing case for that. And really, all I'm getting from this is it's a tool for YouTubers to make fantastic videos to sell more copies of Total War Warhammer, despite the idea that some of those battles we'll now see on YouTube aren't really representative of what the real game is for most people. So... This is why I titled the video The Self-Serving Dross, because it just seems like a marketing tool. It seems like we've been given a marketing tool for free so we can do guerrilla marketing for Creative Assembly. Now, I'm realizing this is turning into a bit of a rant, but when you're looking at this, I just wanted, even if it's, I get that this is free as well, but I just wanted to like, just keep the stuff on track. This seems like an afterthought. This is something that should have come out towards the back end of the game's life cycle. But you're trying to push units, aren't you? Because it's still relatively early. So you come out of this and like, oh, hey, it's coming up to Christmas as well. Maybe we'll see a splurge of huge, fantastic videos uh, on YouTube uh, just in time for the Christmas rush, maybe. Or maybe a bit late for the Christmas rush now. But still, you get the idea. And the whole thing just makes me feel a bit dirty. So that's my thoughts on this whole new laboratory mode. I'm sorry, guys. I did go into a full-on rant there. But it just seems like regular players with regular PC setups will maybe fool around with it for a bit, realize the limitations of their own systems, and then just put it down. YouTubers, will it just opens up the floodgates for umpteen visions of uh, the game on YouTube. And I feel bad if anyone goes out to buy the game based on those videos because uh, it's just not necessarily representative of what the game is. And it just seems like a kind of... Yeah, yeah, here you go, fans. Here's something for you guys to play around with. It seems like marketing, uh, but also it just seems like a marketing trick that played on us who just enjoy the game and want to play it and do like it. But it just seems like it's, an, it's a sort of a backdoor way of doing weird marketing. Again, going into the same points, but that's just how I'm feeling about this. Uh, so this is really the reason for my delayed reaction to this new mode. On the surface, seems fun, but I get this kind of cynical undertone to the whole thing and if it caused any kind of delay to actual content that people want to see and also with the experiment there are things in the game that people want to see you guys experiment with at creative assembly can you imagine if this experiment um because the experiment was promised us to a, a while back as part of the free lc and we'll uh, pull that up now but as you can see it was the third one along we're already meant to have had a free legendary lord for the skaven now, admittedly, looking at it and looking at the news they've released, the Skaven Legendary Lord will arrive along with the Tomb Kings in January. Uh, but, but this experiment just seems like something that nobody really asked for. Yeah, there are a few mods out there that up the unit size and stuff like that. But it's not really a huge deal, at least not that I've ever been aware of in the Total War community. Yes, Skaven numbers were a bit underwhelming compared to the lore of Skaven and stuff like that, but not to the point that warranted this. I mean, there's stuff that people do want, like where the hell's the bloody army painter? Experiments like that, naval combat, things like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff they could have spent a bit of time on. Now, admittedly, all of that would have taken much more time than this, because as I said earlier, this is just playing around with scales, but... uh. This whole thing is just exasperating. It's just like, all right, so if that delayed, if this had any role in that delay, then that's just rubbish. Because, yeah, all right. So now YouTubers will go make videos. I'll enjoy some of those videos as well. I, hell, I might even make some. But the point is that it's just advertising the game and also in a way that isn't really representative of the game. Um, so all in all, that's my feelings on this new lab thing. On the surface, kind of fun. And if you just want to sit back and enjoy it and think I'm a grumpy Gus, then by all means do. Please don't uh, sort of let me put you off it. But I just it just gives me an icky feeling. Uh, but anyway, that's about it, guys. I've ranted long enough. Um, as always, a huge thank you to all for watching. And uh, I hope to catch you all in the next one. And uh, hopefully by then we'll have some more updates on the next DLC for Total War Warhammer 2.